Okay, Fort Pelters, well, I'm out here at uh, the Waranga Basin. I uh, just had a bit of a ride today. I've ended up here in a great location. It's uh, The weather's been perfect today. A little bit overcast, not too hot. Anyway, thought it was time to do a 20,000 K honest review on the DR650. Well, let's get into it. Yeah, so guys, it's uh, March 2023. I purchased uh, the DR in uh, mid-2020. So it's almost three years old now. And I've just uh, clocked up just over 21,000 K on it at the moment. Let's show you that. 21,700. And it's been a fantastic bike. So this was the Tanami edition. Um, so Suzuki had that little offer going there for a while and with the Tanami edition you got the uh, the Pirelli MT21 tyres uh, you got the bash plate you got bark busters you got the Tanami sticker pack and you also got the service 20 litre tank so that wasn't a bad little bundle uh, to entice people to buy the DR650 so uh, yeah, that was one of the uh, reasons I did buy it because they were offering uh, that. So let's just work work our way from the front to the back. Currently, I'm running the D606, the Dunlop D606 tyres, front and rear. Uh, you can see that L606, and particularly on the back, I find the D606. Uh, I'm really happy with that. You get about, I don't know, five or six thousand K out of the, uh, the rear, a little bit more out of the front. And I think most people go for the MT21 on the front. There's a bit of a combination they find best, but I really don't see much difference between the 606 on the front and the MT21. So I think just for wear purposes, the D606 were, uh, wears a little bit better. Um, so again, I'm just, I'll run over the bike, probably, uh, you know, the similar sort of thing that I did at the 10,000k review. But anyway, starting at the front, uh, yeah, I've got this uh, headlight protector there, just a bit of Perspex. Uh, brought that from Adventure Bike Australia. And you can see it's fairly, fairly thick, so. And I've added some sort of heavy-duty Velcro onto that to hold it in place. You do get Velcro with it, but I felt that the uh, heavy duty one was a lot better. And you can just pull that off, you know, pull, you know, easily pull that off to clean behind it if need be. I've got the, you know, so it come with the Storm, I mean, it come with the Bark Buster Guards. Uh, with the Tanami pack, I've added the Storm hand protectors. The Bark Buster's uh, biggest hand guard, so they give you the most protection. Also added the... Um, uh, double take mirrors they are expensive but they do work well and I think they look good too so that was one of the reasons that I got them they look really good uh, I've only just recently you can't really see that I've only just recently um, installed the fat bars these are the pro taper bars the Wyndham bend uh, I do have one inch risers on them as well all this was purchased well i think from the mx store uh, also i put on the uh, pro taper uh, grips the pillow top grips and when i was swapping the bars over i also bought a aftermarket uh, throttle tube as well and that was from adventure bike australia and you can also see i'm running the omni cruise uh, throttle lock so yeah this works really well for those long rides you can lock just lock the throttle in where you like and when you want to you know just get rid of it you just wind it forward so it at least gives your uh, your right hand a little bit of a rest on those long rides uh, running the 
Wunderlich uh, handlebar bag here. I'm not sure whether I'm still going to continue with this handlebar bag. It is handy. Um, so I'll just sort of see how I go with these new bars. I, um, yeah, like I say, I've still got it. And it works well. And it complements this little beauty here. Now this is a game changer. This little tank bag here by OBR Adventure Gear. Fantastic bit of kit. You can see how small it is. I hate having a big tank bag in front of me. You, uh, you don't even know it's there when you're sitting on the seat. But uh, when you're standing up, yeah, your crutch is sitting up here. So it does not get in the way. And uh, it's got two little compartments here. You can see this is sort of a mesh compartment there. You can see stuff inside there. And then, uh, you know, inside it. And it does open up all the way. I'll just show you that with one hand, which makes it really handy. So it will open up. There's my wallet. Watch out, moths might fly out of that. Some lollies, some maps. So you can put a, you can put a lot of stuff in there. Gonna, um, I was running the handy cam camera in there as well. So yeah, it does um, hold a fair bit for a small bag. So I highly recommend this little bag. Again, from Adventure Bike Australia, I'm pretty sure. So really handy bit of kit. Love it. Absolutely love it. And I run that on the T700 as well. So the easily... Um, uh, easy to change from one bike to the other so I love that moving along um, just skipped so I have installed the BMB radiator guard there adventure uh, bike Australia oil filter cover BMB side covers on both sides um, what else oh yes yeah, the BMB frame covers on both sides uh, again, the service tank, 20 litre tank. Uh, when it was in stock form, without the the um, you know the screaming demon on the back there, I'll get to that. I was getting nearly 400 k's per tank, but now with the screaming demon, I get I don't know probably about 370, 380 at best out of a tank. And so moving along, so talking about the screaming demon. Again, this has been a game changer uh, for any modifications to do the DR650 that I have done. The uh, rear muffler and the seat are the two big ones. Absolutely changed the bike. So with the Screaming Demon on it or any sort of aftermarket muffler, uh, it just, just allows the bike to breathe. You know, with the stock muffler, it just holds it back so much. So this allows it to breathe, and uh, you get so much more power out of the bike. And I absolutely love it. I'm running the street insert in it, which is the quietest insert, and I find that works best. The other ones, there's uh, there's two other inserts you get with this uh, muffler, and they they're a lot louder. Um, but I find it backfires a lot more uh, on deceleration. So it seems to be in a happy place with the most restricted one. And there's not a lot of difference, power difference at, um, between all three inserts. So for the minute bit of power difference, yeah, I just go for the quieter one. And I, I think that, uh, you know, the engine's a lot happier with that. So the other game changer is the Sergeant seat. This seat is absolutely fantastic, <laughs> beautiful, comfortable. You can ride this bike all day. And not get a sore butt. Well, you know, you, you get a sore butt on no matter what bike. But uh, it is makes such a big difference. And it's all because it's nice and wide here. So you can sit back on there. Plenty of room for your butt. And then it tapers up very skinny through here. Lots of padding. So just super, super comfortable. The seat and the uh, muffler really have changed this bike. And I love it. So working to the rear as well, uh, I've got the BMB tail rack, the BMB top plate. The top plate allows me to run a um, Givy top box on there, which I swap between the T700 and the DR650. Um, so that's really, really handy. And also when I go camping, I'm running um, you know, the, the pannier bags and also run a 
a uh, I don't know 30 litre bag on top of there as well. But what during the day rides, I just run this Nelson rig tail bag here, which is an absolute fantastic bit of kit. And I've also got the Nelson rig uh, bottle holder on the top there. So in the bottle holder, normally run a thermos. Uh, so you can either have cold water or hot water for a cuppa in there, which is good. And I'll just give you a look at that. So just in here, just got a first aid kit. Got yeah, first aid kit, a pump, a uh, tool kit, and a bit of slime uh, in case I get a puncher. But this little kit here is what I run. This is by Sid Chrome. Here we are at Sid Chrome. And it's fantastic, fantastic little. Hang on, can I open this with one hand? What is it? Sid Chrome Nano. So in there you've got all your screwdriver bits, you know, the main sockets that you would use on this bike, other than, you know, the axles. Um, and it's all just a handy little bit of kit. So I can work on, or do most things on the bike, just from, from that one little kit. And I also got a, a 10 mil, 10 and 12 mil spanners in here as well. Which, oh, hang on. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah, look, they're, they're just with those ratchet, ratchet ends on them. 10 and 12 of those. Yeah, so that's the Nelson Rig uh, tail bag. Also now running the B&B uh, number plate holder. And that's a fantastic bit of kit. Looks Makes the bike look so much better than the, the uh, standard uh, plastic... Um, debacle that hangs out the back here but yeah that's what I'm running the B&B number plate holder so coming back to the racks these are um, Barrett racks Australian made I don't run the cross brace from side to side you can see where the holes are don't think you need it these are really really sturdy solid as and I run the Barrett bags pannier bags on each side and I've got a, a Barrett uh, also a bag that I run on the top when I'm going camping uh, moving my way around uh, again not a lot to see on this side compared to the other side again B&B frame covers B&B um, sprocket uh, cover and the got the B&B case saver there as well We've also disconnected the side sands uh, switch. You can see that. Disconnected that. And I also disconnected the clutch switch as well. So that allows me to uh, start the bike without pulling the clutch in. It also allows me to start the bike without uh, having the stand up. Uh, I also run yeah, in here. Oh, get my finger out of the way. I also run a filter. You can see that there, fuel filter, and uh, that's also from Adventure Bike Australia. And just under here, I've wired in, uh, that allows me to charge the battery. And also on the other side, on the other side here, this is where I've got the... Um, uh, power straight to the battery so I can run the uh, the pump just there um, with the oil I change the oil every 3,000 kilometers have been using the Motul oil I've only just recently started using Castrol uh, the only reason with that I was getting Castrol a little bit cheaper the Motul can be expensive but yeah every 3,000 I change the oil and the oil filter very easy job on the DR6. So yeah, back over this side. Uh, as far as the air filter goes, I do have a uni filter air filter, and I still run the stock filter. I think the stock filter is really, really good. So um, in no hurry to change that, but I just swap between the stock, the stock air filter and uh, the uni filter, whatever's going. I have replaced the chain and sprockets on on the bike as well. Um, you would have seen a video on that where I did that at Hell's, Hell's Garage and I am running a 43 on the back now, 43, 
do not, I don't um, lubricate the chain at all. And it is in really good nick. It's got a little bit of dirt on it, but you can see how clean that is. Look at that. So no, no lube and everything. I'll just give you a look at the sprocket in there. Everything's just hunky-dory. No build up, build up of muck there. Yes, yeah, so I have replaced the uh, brake pads front and rear. Again, there's videos on that with Hal. And we also uh, bled the brakes as well. That probably should be done every 12 months. Uh, still running, yeah, still running the standard globe in the front. I don't do a lot of night riding, but yeah, look, it works okay. Uh, another, just another little thing that I've done here. I have put a little bit of um, plastic protector around this wiring loom here because I'd noticed that it was wearing through the initial um, bit of protection that they have on that wiring. So yeah, just be aware of that, you DR650 uh, owners. Keep an eye on that. So that seems to be uh, holding up really well. Oh, I did buy um, these little brackets here for the, the blinkers and that um, allows the blinkers to come out a little bit because they were hitting on the uh, 20 litre tank so yeah that's another little uh, mod that I've done and again you can see the bar rises there can't remember the oh yeah you know, R, RHK are the bar rises and there's the, the Windham RM uh, mid bend pro taper Lovely. A lot of people Lovely. asking me about my little GPS unit here as well, still running that, and uh, it, it's small, it's a little bit difficult to read, but uh, it's handy, um, and that's all I use. May, occasionally I'll, I'll use the phone, navigate off the phone as well, but that's just a Garmin E-Trex 30. Not the greatest, but it does the job. I've had it since my bushwalking days. Also got the Pro Cycle uh, lowered pegs, and also I've done a. I got a friend of mine to do a modification on the side stand, so I've just welded a larger plate on the bottom of that. It works really well, particularly you can see the soft sand here. Um, so you just got to make sure that the back of that doesn't rub on the swing arm when it's folded up. So just be careful of that. You can see how I've done that. Yeah, and the Pro Cycle uh, lowered pegs work really well. Really happy with them. Helps create that ergonomics triangle. You know, gives you a bit more distance down to the pegs, and also with the the Windham bars now, or the Pro Taper bars with the Windham bend, bring the handlebars up probably about 50 millimeters. So that really works well for me now. I can stand on the pegs, and my arms uh, aren't stretched out. They've just got a slight bend in them. So works really well I have changed the spark plugs probably each 6,000 K so three i have done it three times now and that's just purely because it's an easy job to do when the seat and the tank are off it's quite easy to get to the plugs so and they're just cheap cheap items so just to keep the plugs fresh I've done that at each 6,000 K uh, have not altered the carby or the engine in in, in any way so that's all still stock, bog stock, even the header pipe stock. And I just want to keep it that way because I just find the reliability of this bike is so good and I just don't want to mess with it. Oh, one other thing too guys, I have put a 12 volt socket in here. I'm not sure whether you can see that down in there. You may or not be able to see that, but that's where I've got two... Um, USB ports in there. Let's see if I pop them in. You may be able to see that. So yeah, that was another easy job. I bought um, an auxiliary wire from Adventure Bike Australia that just uh, clipped straight in, so that was an easy mod as well. You just drilled a hole in the uh, uh, top bit of plastic on the headlight guard. So yeah, that's my 20,000 K review. Had no issues with the bike at all. It is bulletproof. Love it. Absolutely love this bike. Uh, feel really comfortable riding it, uh, both on and off road. Handles really well. 
The only other thing I really may do to the bike in the future is the suspension. It's still running the stock suspension. Uh, it is soft, but that does work for my, in my favour in a way, in that I'm not tall, and having the soft suspension uh, allows me to, you know, touch the ground. If I had, if I do uh, get this suspension upgraded, the bike does sit a lot taller and it may be a problem for me touching the ground so we'll see but that's about the only other thing i may do in the future so yeah i hope you enjoyed that video guys um brilliant bike and i'll uh probably run another video at 30,000 k so we'll see how it's going then all right i'll catch you on the next episode of full pelt adventures cheers listen to the screaming demon It sounds pretty good. Just a slight pop there on deceleration. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that review. And uh, yeah, should have bought the rod. Catch a big fish some boats way out there. I'll have to bring the kayak here I think one day. Actually there are kayaks out there. This is a young couple here just had a bit of a fish, had no luck but uh, anyway quite relaxing. Oh, so let's get the hell out of here. Coming up to a uh, channel here, this is maybe where the water runs out of Warang Waranga Basin, it's a bit hard to say. Well, the car's giving away here, but I'll give you a bit of a look at that. Yeah, it's fairly big, it's a lot of water. I'll just come in here and have a take a photo in here. Maybe. Yeah, just stopped at this little waterway here. It looks bloody fantastic. Trees are getting a drink. A little bit of bird life in here. But yeah, it looks really nice. Be great if the sun was out. Anyway, just thought I'd drop in here. Looks cool. Okay, guys, I'm just at the servo here. I've done 312k. <coughs> Just see how much fuel it's used. I usually run the 95 in the DR. Don't have to. Most people probably run 91. But I just want to see how much fuel it's uh, used. The tank was full when I left home. Should you have used, I think, about 16 litres. So I'll see how we go. Thirteen point eight, fourteen, fifteen point two. Let's have a look. Fifteen point four eight. Yeah, 
15 and a half, so I was close. 15.55 for 312k. So uh, yeah, it uses about 5 litres 100. 